The register block type function is at the heart of creating custom blocks in the new Gutenberg editor, so it's really important that we take a thorough look at how it works. Now, register block type is a JavaScript function that's used to create custom blocks. So whenever we want to set up our own custom block, we're going to call this register block type function to do it. And WordPress makes this function available to us in the global scope. So we could access it like window.blocks.registerBlockType. So the window just tells us that it's saved in the global window object, and we don't actually have to write window, it's just for demonstration purposes. WP is a globally available WordPress object that contains a whole lot of helpful libraries in it, and we've already looked in this course at the blocks library, so we know the blocks library contains helpful functions for creating blocks as well as components to help us build blocks. And then finally, the register block type function, which is what we're looking at here. Now, the register block type function takes two parameters. The first parameter, when we see them broken up onto several lines here, because the information we're going to be feeding is quite a lot by the time we're done. So it makes sense to do them on separate lines like this. And the name parameter is a computer readable name for this, and it contains two parts. The first part is a namespaced part of it, so we see that appears example plugin, and then the slash example plugin is the quote unquote namespace for this. So, for example, if you were building a plugin, you would give it probably a common namespace for all of your blocks, and then the actual name of the block itself. And this is going to be used behind the scenes a number of different ways. And then we have a settings parameter. The second parameter is an object, and we'll take a bunch of properties inside of it that we'll look at in a moment. But this is the basic setup for register block type. Now more than likely in your code you're going to include a line at the top of your code like we see here const register block type window.wp.blocks and what we're doing here is we're deconstructing the blocks object and pulling out register block type all on its own so that we could just write register block type in our code. And since we don't have blocks as a separate NPM package, it's just globally available, then we don't have to import it from anywhere. We're just simply simplifying the name so that we could have it a little bit shorter in our code. So in our code, we'll probably see something like this at the top, and then we could just call register block type on its own. Now the settings parameter for register block type has a number of important properties that we want to talk about. The first one is title, and this is actually going to be the name of our block. We saw when we gave our block itself a name, it was a computer readable name. Well, this will be a human readable name and we'll escape it so it could also be translated. And this is what will appear in the UI when someone's searching for or adding our block. Then we have the category. There are a few predefined categories in WordPress for different types of blocks, so embeddable blocks, so blocks that are embeds, layout blocks, common blocks, and we'll look at the different options that we have, and you'll choose from one of those and identify it here. And then when someone is searching in the UI, your block will show up in that area underneath that heading. Then we have the icon. This should make sense. It appears with the title when you're adding a block, and we could either choose from a default WordPress dash icon to use, or we could add our own custom SVG element, and I'll show you how to do that. Next up, we have keywords, and these are additional ways that someone can search for and find your block. So by default, when someone is searching for your block, just the name of the block is searchable, but you're allowed to enter three different keywords or phrases that someone could also search for in order to have your block show up. Then we get into attributes, which we'll actually explore last, but usually in the order of how it's written in your code, attributes appear next. And these identify all of the dynamic data in your block. So it may be that you have an editable part of your block, and we need to identify that here under attributes, and there's some specific ways we go about doing that. For me, attributes are actually one of the more clever pieces of engineering underneath the hood in how blocks work. Then we have the edit setting, and this is where we'll pass in all of the UI and functionality for editing the block, and we'll build this with JavaScript. There are several different ways to go about it. Most commonly, we'll use JSX, and we're going to build out what the actual markup for inside the block is, as well as all the functionality, what should happen when you save something or change something or edit something and all of that. So really, I'd say that this setting is probably going to be a good portion of your code. So most of your block code is going to go inside of here, and we may even break it up into smaller files, but really this is going to be 
the core functionality of your block itself. So this will be a pretty robust section. And then finally, the save setting. And this is going to be the UI and functionality for how your block is displayed on the front end. And I put functionality in parentheses here because when you're editing your block, there's definitely functionality. But you may have a block that doesn't have a lot of functionality on the front end once it's displayed, or you may have one that's really rich. So depending on your block, the save setting for how this is rendered on the front end may be pretty simple or it may be fairly complex. If we take a look at this code sample here, you could see that we have all of these in action. So the title, which is being localized through wp.i189 underscore underscore, which we'll explore more in this course. But as you saw, this is a library to make our text translatable. So this is going to be the human readable name, example custom block in this case. Then the category is common. This is kind of the default category. We'll explore all of the different ones as we look at all of these in depth. Icon, we're choosing a dash icon. In this case, it's going to display a dark WordPress icon. And then we have our keywords. So if somebody searches for the word demo, they'll find our block, even though that's nowhere in the title. And then our edit and save properties here are pretty simple. We're basically just writing out a paragraph that says show in the editor and a paragraph that says show on the front end, and those would be displayed in the editor front end. This is probably a way oversimplified and in fact, we don't even have attributes listed here because we need to have editable data or at least dynamic data in order for those to be relevant. So over the next few videos, we're going to be looking at each one of these attributes in depth so that we really understand how they work and how to go about using them. Because once you understand these common attributes, it really just becomes about, can I build my block with the JavaScript I know? And we'll look at some examples to help with that too. But these are the core ones here, just showing a simple example. Now to learn these, actually going to be using blocks to learn how to build blocks. So when you install the plugin for this course, you'll see some blocks for register block type. We'll go ahead and add these in, looking at some code samples along the way of how each one works and of how we could add it to our project. Then we'll pull everything together, look at a final example, and from there we'll see how to make a basic, simple, editable block that is kind of the heart foundation for a lot of other types of blocks you'd want to build. And of course, to keep things practical, Along the way, as we look at each setting, we'll also look at how to build our own custom block and how those would be put into practice in a common application. So that's what we'll be doing in the next several videos. But first, I want to show you how to get set up with the code that you'll need in order to play along with and possibly edit the demo block that we'll be building.